Good morning. It's time for Daily Chapel. The text is 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 6 to 13. The Reverend Mark Keisling is preaching. The broadcast of Chapel is underwritten by LCMS International Mission and Ministry to the Armed Forces. Our reading for today is from 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 6 through 13. Paul writes, Now if these things took place as examples for us, that we may not desire evil as they did. Do not be idolaters as some of them were. As it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. We must not indulge in sexual immorality as some of them did, and 23,000 fell in a single day. We must not put Christ to the test as some of them did, and were destroyed by serpents, nor grumble as some of them did, and were destroyed by the destroyer. Now these things happened to them as an example, but they were written down for our instruction on whom the end of the ages has come. Therefore, let anyone who thinks that he stands take heed, lest he fall. No temptation has overtaken you that is not common to man. God is faithful, and he will not let you be tempted beyond your ability. But with the temptation, he will also provide the way of escape that you may be able to endure it. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. You may be seated. God has given us and our spiritual ancestors of the New and Old Testament and faithful Christians throughout the ages such great wisdom. We are reminded that in our fallen world, we don't face anything new in terms of human depravity. Life brings temptation and trial. There's nothing new under the sun. The Apostle Paul wrote, Therefore let anyone who thinks he stands take heed lest he fall. No temptation has overtaken you that is not common to man. Martin Luther wrote in his reflection on the sixth petition of the Lord's Prayer, so there is no help or comfort except to run here to take hold of the Lord's Prayer and speak to God from the heart like this. Dear Father, you have asked me to pray. Don't let me fall because of temptation. And our hymn writer for today as well speaks to that need of forgiveness and the sinful condition of mankind. In our reading for today, Paul writes to the Corinthians about their spiritual fathers, our spiritual fathers, the Israelites. He talks about their rhythm of life in the desert from when they crossed the Red Sea to just about when they entered the Promised Land. It's an account full of their failure and God's faithfulness. God continually provides and takes care of his people while they grumble and take it for granted. Paul reflects on their sin of idolatry sexual immorality, grumbling, and coveting. They coveted the meat and vegetables they had in Egypt, even though they ate those while living as slaves. They grumbled about God's generous gift of manna, quail, and water. They worshiped the golden calf when impatient with God's timeline. They gave into sexual temptation instead of reflecting obedience in the thanksgiving for all the things God had given them. Paul states to the Corinthians and us, that our spiritual fathers were given to us as an example that we may not crave sin as they did. We are blessed that the Holy Spirit worked through Moses to record their history so that we could learn it and strive to not be doomed by repeating it. Paul wants the Corinthians to know the danger of their sin. Sin against God is serious. Some Corinthians lived in pride and thought they had a special knowledge that was superior to God's will and the wisdom he had given in his word. Some, some hung out in temples constructed to false gods and craved the meat that was sacrificed to these idols. Some Corinthians were involved in sexual sins that showed disdain for others and offended God. Some grumbled against Paul, God's messenger, and took for granted God's gift of spiritual food and abused it. Paul warns that such idolatry and immorality brings God's judgment upon them, just as it did the Israelites. Today, too, we hear, turn our ears to Paul's warning. Therefore, let anyone who thinks he stands take heed lest he fall. For our sin against God is serious. 
Sin of idolatry, coveting, and immorality bring God, brings God's judgment. Sin destroys the relationship between us and God. Sin destroys relationships between fellow human beings and between us and God's creation. Sin is rebellion against God and his will for us and his creation that he is so blessedly given. Also reflecting on the sixth, sixth petition of the Lord's Prayer, Luther discussed the power of the unholy trinity of temptation, consisting of self, world, and the devil. These things are all active in our lives. It is only by the power of the Holy Trinity we find refuge, refuge from our sin and find the power to resist temptation that is thrown at us from all angles. God's will is to save us from our sin and to give us the power to overcome temptation. God reveals his will in his word that we would not sin and that we would trust in him in all things. God provides his salvation and a way out. Ultimately, our Heavenly Father made us heirs of His grace and mercy through Jesus Christ, our Savior, from sin. He saves us from the sin of our nature that corrupts us and the sins we openly commit. Out of selfless love, our Savior died for our sin of self-love. He emptied Himself, made Himself nothing, took on human form, and died on a cross. Our Savior knows the world will bring trouble, but He gives us His peace and reassures us that He has overcome the world and all its temptations. Our Savior has defeated our accuser, the devil, and rendered him powerless. Jesus did not give into Satan's test, although surrounded by them. And in his time of great anguish for our sin, and with the cross before him, Jesus prayed that God's will be done, and he accepted our Heavenly Father's will, and he perfectly obeyed all the way to his death for us. And out of love, our Savior sends us his Comforter, the Holy Spirit. Our Savior does not leave us alone to our own devices, but, but rather sympathizes with our weakness and temptation. Jesus sends his Holy Spirit to bring peace to a troubled conscience, works on our hearts to guard against temptation, and fights the battle against the devil. He places his word in our mouth that we may pray to him that he may not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from evil. In our weakness, we rest in Christ's strength. We pray for Jesus' deliverance and that the Holy Spirit continually works to, protect, to perfect our faith in Jesus, our Savior, and our way out. God will never give us a temptation that we cannot escape. That is the power of God's Spirit at work. As God's children, through the waters of baptism, we are given this endurance to stand on the rock that is Christ. Our ears are returned to hear his call to humbly repent and ask for forgiveness from God and from our brothers and sisters in Christ. We are enlightened to rely on this wisdom of God and understand that it is not by our power we stand against the trials and temptation of ourselves and our fallen word, but rather by God's great gift and power. May God grant this endurance to us. In the name of Jesus, amen. Thank you for joining us for chapel. The broadcast of Chapel is underwritten by LCMS International Mission and Ministry to the Armed Forces. To learn more about LCMS International Mission and Ministry to the Armed Forces, visit kfuo.org slash chapel.